a crow here. Got some uh, more tech. Uh, as you see, it's being well treated in transport like it's supposed to be. So, yeah, <laughs> it's um, probably one of the craziest purchases I've done, but um, it wasn't that expensive. So, so that makes me think that maybe I've actually, instead of making a, a sane purchase, I've made an insane purchase. But anyway. It's always fun doing insane things. Um, it's 22 kilograms of electronics. So anyway, what, what do we have here? I've got a cheat sheet here. So this is a uh, older generation um, fabric interconnect from Cisco. A Cisco UC S6296UP. And um, basically it's a two rack unit. And the idea is that it's an interconnect unit for 10 gigabit connections and a fiber channel over Ethernet. Um, it has a total throughput, uh, which is great for its generation, uh, 1920 gigabits per second on 96 ports if it's fully decked out. This is not fully decked out. So um, this has uh, 48 ports on it. Um, yeah, and then it should have a management interface, a UCS management interface, so we'll have a look at that, uh, that later. Uh, now one has to take into account that Cisco has a licensing policy, so um, if this is, like, uh, would come from Cisco just as it is, then you actually have, um, on the base unit, you have 18 ports licensed, so out of the 48 ports you have 18 ports licensed for um, 10 gigabits. Now it's a bit unclear if I read the specification as to whether those ports like are the ones that are not the ports that are not licensed that they're completely disconnected or you could still do some lower speeds or maybe it's uh, restricted only for um, uh, 10 gigabit fiber channel over Oh, uh, it's a, bit, a little bit of a yeah that's usual licensing so I have to we will learn as we test and throw it away if it doesn't meet our requirements. Uh, and then if you install expansion slots, then um, there also you don't get um, the full number of ports licensed, then you get eight per expansion mod. So anyway, my idea was that we could unbox this, see if it survived the transport, and then um, uh, first power up, just to see that we get some blinking lights and then uh, we will continue in other videos with the configurations and other things oh, let's see we can um, <laughs> get into this box strip page per mesh in it so, so I will um, <laughs> come back when I got the main box off because I have to actually pick all this stuff out it wasn't actually that not bad I thought I'd continue filming because it was actually on <laughs> Good. That little amount of packing will do, but um, go back to it. That could be more on the other side. relatively well packed and well, I say how can you pack things nowadays I mean everything just gets kicked and th 
tore off trucks and stuff and if you break fragile and then they'll double to jump on it just to make sure it gets busted. I should leave the rest of the tape mesh. How to um to extract. Can't see it from there. <laughs> Quite a lot of tape. Yeah. Just carefully lift that over here. Well, that's actually quite nicely packed. I'm gonna try to lift this paper mesh to the side here. Well, they tried to box it as best they could. <laughs> the easiest thing to box up to survive international truck. So, I think that's good enough. Careful. Move the top down there. And more paper mesh on them. And I don't actually know what's up and what's down right now. So. Okay, so the unit is at least free, so I'll just get rid of the paper again. So, getting closer to the core unit. I mean, of course, this is totally overkill for a home lab, but hey, if, it, if, if based on what I've been reading about it, it works the way I think it works, then why not? Um, the uh, price I paid for this is um, less than what you pay for a 4 or 10 port uh, 10 gigabit SFP switch so yeah <laughs> this is Cisco Enterprise equipment <laughs> oh I can't remember what year it was taken out of action but I think it was 2012 this twist, uh, or something like around that that they started to stop support or they didn't recommend it anymore. Anyway. Corner in, and that's exactly where the power supply is sitting. So, so, so. so 
Ich würde das mit damit schon. So, we might not be able to power it on prior to doing some serious investigation. Oh man, this sucks. This, this has been bust around like hell. So, what do we have here? We have, um, crap, we have a very severe dent in the corner here, it's really pushed up this plate, and then we have these are bashed over, we have one fan that's been really whacked, where you pull it out, it's been really whacked hard. And this has really been pushed in, so I actually have to try and get that power supply out one way or the other. And to check the insides. Maybe not this one. Yeah, probably have to try and do this one also. And then, um, yeah, it's on both sides. The other side. are not that damaged well a little bit less damaged than this side but here you see that's just banged in like hell why do they do this kind of stuff this is the whole thing with transport nowadays it's just crap okay so this is the bottom side So this is upside down. Side brackets need to be bashed out. Now the um oh. Right. 
So, no power on. But I can use the magic of video and after I straightened out some of these bits and checked the... Now the main problem is the power supplies because now they've been dented, the mains input has been dented so I really need to get those. Oh, the fan is uh, the fan, as long as it's not bashed onto the fan then it will be okay. Well, this, is, this is a bit serious so I'm going to actually unscrew these and try and get the power supplies out because I really need to be able to look at the inside. It's really being smashed, or is this just the form from the factory? Hard to say. Pity. I will take out the fan that's the most damaged and see if I can. Now, just to double check it. Okay, so I'll be back with the magic of the, the camera, and then we can maybe try and. Or not. So anyway, back again. Uh, I have to use a little bit of a hammer, wrench, screwdriver, some plastic, and then just to try and uh, persuade all the mechanical components in the place. I couldn't find any electronics being trashed, and I also use the multimeter to measure the power supply so all the, you know, the grounding pin works and the main pins are grounded so yeah and it doesn't seem to yeah so I'm hoping those are okay so um, the next step is this is going to uh, put the leads on some power leads and then we'll see if it starts and of course it could throw a failure and stuff and I actually don't know the status lights exactly it's the first time I'm going to be starting this up so um, yeah I'll bring you back when I got the cables so anyway um, this is going to be very loud so I don't know if I'll be able to say anything while it's running and of course it could blow a fuse so if it blows a fuse then it goes all black because we're all in the same fuse in here so um, yeah Let's see what now we're both connected, let's see what happens. Oh, see what the power supply is the same. Okay, okay. the diagnostics of the power supplies. The fans are running. I don't hear any horrible screeching sound like a fan. The fan has grown the mechanical twisted to it. All in line. I mean, this thing is going to be noisy. <laughs> I'm going to enterprise equipment for the server room. But it, it's not. And, um, It will probably remain noisy until it's gone through all of its diagnostics and it's powered up the operating system. Ah, you see, now you hear a pitch change. That's actually positive because it means that something's happening with the software. So I would expect it to get louder, maybe even extremely loud, and then it should like calm down. No status lights on the front. And actually, the interesting thing with this one is that counterintuitively this is the front and this is the back because in the back you connect all the network connections so this is kind of a reverse to a server. Now the fans don't sound that bad. So of course, no idea if it works, um, I haven't connected to it, but this is going to be the extent of this video is to get it unboxed it, check for damage, I <laughs> found a whole part of it, I'm probably going to send a message to the seller suggesting it, uh, I don't know, hard to say, it's 
the seller's fault either because on the transport organizations they treat the stuff like crap whatever how much you pack it but I, I would I'm probably going to message him and suggest that he pulls these fans and the power supplies and somehow puts them separately in their own packing with the box so that they, they don't get hit on because the main damage happened because it got um, slammed on um, on these so if they'd been out in a separate package then uh, it would have at least just hit the corner and the corner would have been twisted I haven't died by touching the metal parts. <laughs> I think I'm going to put a network cable into the management port. See if it wakes up. part of the management for things to be working. supposed to happen. So now you see the whole row of lights down there. But that's also good. 
So everything green on the back. Management console is um, indicating something. And we have lights in the front. Of course I have no no modules and stuff. Now all these need to be configured in the management software, the ports, but um, just put in a random one. See, it's software, I need to go into the management software and tell it about this module, otherwise it won't work. Oh, what was the trick to get this out? Oh. That way. Keep on forgetting that they have this lock. This is a fiber optic adapter. I don't actually know if this is supported, so that's also going to be part of the next level testing. It's hot in here. So anyway, um, the rest of the configuration will be in another video. And start with the console connection to this box. To set it up. So, um, anyway, if you thought this video was useful, then consider hitting the like button. If you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee for all Work I've done would be appreciated, or you can buy merch, the links are in the description, and if you'd like to follow up on further, further actions to get this into use, then um, I'll see you in the next one.